I am a big Metroidvania fan, but I slept on Ender Lilies. As soon as I heard that Ender Magnolia was being released, I wasn't sure if I should be excited or not. So I decided to play through Ender Lilies real quick to see if I should even play Ender Magnolia. So what even is Ender Lilies? It's a Metroidvania set in the dark fantasy world, ravaged by a deadly rain that has left the kingdom in ruins and its inhabitants corrupted. You play as Lily, which is a white priestess with the power to purify the blighted, as you set out on a journey through this hauntingly beautiful, semi-interconnected environment to uncover the mysteries of the kingdom's downfall. The game blends atmospheric exploration with engaging combat, allowing players to summon spirits of purified enemies for abilities and attacks. Its narrative unfolds through diaries and cutscenes. With its focus on art and music, Ender Lilies ends up being a top tier Metroidvania game if you are a fan of the genre. Not gonna lie, Ender Lilies is a Metroidvania game that I actively avoided for a long time. The first time I saw it, there's something about the combat or the movement that just rubbed me the wrong way. I think that the main thing was the way that the attacks looked. You could see that the main character Lily would stop any forward movement to pause and have something else attack for her and in my mind i thought that there would be like some sort of delay or lag whenever there were attacks that were going on and to have something appear and pause movement just might not feel good Comparing this to Hollow Knight and most other Metroidvania games, when you attack, you can continue to move forward the entire time. The delay in movement in attack, it just felt different. Despite this, I kept hearing how awesome Ender Lilies is, and then we got that announcement for the sequel for Ender Magnolia, which is releasing on March 25th. So naturally, I needed to play through Ender Lilies real quick before the sequel was released and see if I even need to be excited for the sequel. Basically, I was a huge skeptic for Ender Lilies, but it ended up really surprising me. Overall, it was better than than I would have expected, and I should have given it a chance a lot earlier on. It was not a perfect game, but it holds a place as one of the top games in the Metroidvania genre. Right from the jump, the artwork is stunning. I love the background and the depth, the dreary, rundown kingdom. It pulls you in and makes you want to know what happened. The game is beautifully created with muted tones through the entire landscape. Everything is pretty much dead and decayed, so there's not too many major changes in the different areas that conflict with the overall theme of death in the rundown kingdom, and the art and the music are major standouts for Ender Lilies. The music has this beautiful piano that draws you in. Many of the songs lead with a somber piano or a violin that was almost classical but very much modern. I, I, I don't know what I'm talking about there, but it was fitting for a priest that's trying to become the savior. If you like the lo-fi music on the background of this video, check out my Relia lo-fi gaming music on Spotify. I'm releasing tons of new music and it's perfect to listen to while working or studying. Link down below. There's a mechanic for leveling up when you gain experience from destroying enemies and bosses. The system is fully automatic and you have no stats to spend points into damage, health, defense, or anything like that. Number go up, at the top left, you will now deal more damage. Does it do anything else? I don't know, maybe. The game doesn't really tell you, but you for sure deal more damage. I didn't really mind that you didn't have control like a traditional RPG, but I'm sure others would like to have the option to have the control. I actually thought it was nice not getting bogged down into the details and feeling like I might be spending points in the wrong category like with Grime. There are tons of areas that need a good old fashioned Metroidvania exploring with plenty of items and paths just out of reach. But this is where Ender Lilies is lacking. The exploration and the map in general could have been better. Believe it or not, there's a lack of one-to-one -one representation with the actual level layout and how the rooms appear as boxes. Each box on the map is roughly the same size, but the room might be massive or it might be really small. It really complicates backtracking and remembering the rooms more difficult. I hope this will be fixed in Ender Magnolia. There is no way to make any sort of marking on the map which made backtracking a little bit more difficult. There is one time in particular in the catacombs I think it was called where I couldn't figure out what was the correct path forward. I thought I had checked every last option for the rooms and there was no possible ways for me to go forward. I mean it's just regular metroidvania stuff but it would have been nice to be able to mark the map on all the different places that I'd already checked or places that I still need to check. There were two things that I really loved about this game, and that was that you could unlock fast travel to move between the rest pits, which is your save spots, really early on, and 
If you get too far from a save point, you can hit the pause button and quickly teleport back. What a huge time save. That made exploring so much better. I honestly wish that this is implemented in more Metroidvania games. Half the time, if you are in the exploration mode and can't figure out where to go next, it's faster to die and get reset back to your last save point. The other thing that I really loved is today's sponsor, Lenovo Legion. They have deals every day for gaming PCs and laptops that will allow you to fully enjoy the world of Ender Lilies. I talked to the marketing rep and he said that they will be sending out a Lenovo Legion Go, which is their handheld gaming platform. It's basically a PC in your hands with a high resolution 1440p display and 144 hertz refresh rate. I'll review future games on that bad boy and let you know how it goes. All right, back to Ender Lilies. Some people like this and others not so much, but as soon as you enter a room, the entire room is shown on your map and it'll point out where each of the different doors are. Do you like that? I didn't really bother me too much. I try not to enter any rooms that I'm not fully prepared to explore unless I'm low on health and I will pop my head into each and every room real quick looking for a bench. I mean, uh, respite, you know, the safe spots. Actually, those safe spots are all different objects, which I thought was really cool, but it works pretty much the same as Hollow Knight. Ender Lilies even has the same charm system, but it's called a relic system. You can hold more relics as you get more relic slots. It's essentially the charm system from Hollow Knight and other Metroidvania games. Where Ender Lilies really sets itself apart from Hollow Knight is the combat system. As you play through, you'll unlock different spirits by defeating mini bosses to purify them. Each mini boss will let you gain one of their special attacks. One of the items that you can find around the map is kind of like a current Currency, which will then let you upgrade the special attacks. There are lock on missiles, a deadly mist, a massive hammer, or all kinds of different things. You can equip up to three at a time and then have a hotkey to switch to a second loadout with three different attacks. I personally like to have one main loadout and the backup set up specifically to fight airborne enemies and this made me feel like I was ready for anything. There are a lot of spirits to choose from by the end of the game, more than I ever could have had use for in even leveling them up to make them viable, but it was interesting. One thing that was strange was how there was a limited use for the number of attacks you could do with each spirit. Some spirits had tons of use before they would run out, and others were more powerful and you would run out really quickly. I was not a big fan of this mechanic, but it makes sense as some of the spirits would have just been really overpowered. Like I mentioned at the beginning, the thing that I was most worried about was that when you're running, the attack pattern stops in front of you and makes you stop moving. It was like the spirit or ghost thing was stopping you so you could attack. I got over it pretty quickly, I'm not going to lie. What I did notice is that the enemies didn't give much of any feedback that they were taking on damage beyond their health bar going down. It was like hitting air a lot of times. That was one thing that I was not a big fan of. I wish that the enemies would give more feedback whenever you do land a hit. The death system was pretty basic. If you die, you return back to your save point or the respite. There was no loss of currency. In fact, it just dawned on me, there was no real currency at all. You have to earn all of your power-ups by finding them on the map. There's no merchants or things to buy. I liked the no penalty for death system. It made me feel less bad about death, especially in some of the harder areas towards the end. There are tons of Metroidvania games where the penalty is pretty devastating and this is not one of them. Midway through the game, I found myself running past the enemies to just try to find a save spot and lock in the progress. I was finding that later, if I wasn't killing enough of these enemies, I was lacking in my overall level and damage output. For some of the bosses, I think I was under leveled by quite a bit, but I got them all pretty much for a shot. You know, I'm, I'm kind of a big deal like that. Again, I do like the idea of leveling up from killing the mobs and stuff around. It gives purpose to defeating the enemies otherwise it would just make sense to run past all of them all the time pretty quickly there was a first boss and it looked great the music was awesome but it went down super easy and not very difficult at all you could pretty much just spam the attack button the attacks were pretty well telegraphed in a good way it just felt a little bit on the easy side but that said later on there was definitely some difficulty spikes with the bosses I thought that the exploration was better than with Metroid Dread, mainly because as soon as you got a new movement ability, you could use it to immediately backtrack and find new areas you couldn't reach before. The bosses were tougher than Metroid Dread, but also really enjoyable. The bosses in Ender Lilies range from just being hard to very high difficulty spikes, especially if you were not taking the time to level up. I think my gripe with Metroid Dread specifically was the fact that there were plenty of times where you would get an upgrade ability and you would remember something that you could have gone and backtracked for, but then the game would lock you from doing backtracking until you got like much further into the game. 
that's not something that you're going to run into with ender lilies as soon as you get an upgrade you can go pretty much wherever you want to use that new upgrade ability i know it sounded like i had a lot of gripes with ender lilies but it was small stuff that i was able to get over and enjoy what was here it was fun to play the controls were responsive it's beautiful and fun to explore and fight ender lilies took me on a journey i didn't expect to love as much as i did despite my initial reservations about its combat mechanics map layout the game's enchanting art compelling music and the hauntingly beauty of its world completely won me over it's a dark fantasy metroidvania that masterfully blends the atmospheric exploration with unique combat thanks to its unique spirit summoning system while it's not without its flaws such as a map system that could have been more intuitive and a lack of direct control over leveling up the strengths far outweigh these minor grades I think Ender Lilies is a must play for fans of the Metroidvania genre as well as those who appreciate the beautiful art and music as well as the exploring the nooks and crannies that the developers decided to hide. This is a game that challenges and rewards in equal measure offering a deeply satisfying experience for both veterans and newcomers of the genre if you're looking for a game that combines exploration and combat ender lilies is a journey worth taking and after all that i do believe that ender magnolia is something worth being excited for i can't wait for this game to release i am going to play through it and do a review of that let me know down in the comments, are you planning on getting Ender Magnolia? What did you think of Ender Lilies? What were your thoughts and experiences with the game? Thank you so much to my members who are supporting the channel. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. My name is Relia, and I'll talk to you again more real soon. Thanks. Bye.